the grand challenge in AI right now is autonomous racing. More than two autonomous race cars going head to head at full speed has never been done before. Green light on at the end of the first up jump. taken the fastest car that you can have, taken out the position of the driver and developed a physical autonomy stack that allows the car to have reception capability and it allows that car to drive by wire. We've invited these coding teams from all over the world to come and fill that empty computer with their code, take in all the perception data and instruct the drive by wire system on how to negotiate this track at the highest possible speeds. This is our car for the HRL competition. It's a Dallara Super Formula race car, which is second fastest to only a Formula One car. Except obviously the big difference here is there's no driver. There's a bunch of sensors in the middle. We have GPS systems. We have one GPS at the front, one at the back here or the middle of the car. That helps us get a general idea of where the vehicle is located on the track. And then on top of that, we have a vector nav with an IMU that gives us speed data. Uh, acceleration data as well as which car, where the car is facing so we, we know where, how to make a turn. And then on top of that we have a bunch of sensors to help detect things around us. So we have three, ra three LIDARs as well as three radars in the front here, one more radar on the back, and then seven cameras all around the car which gives the car a full 360 view of everything around it which helps us detect opponents whether it's behind us, next to us, in front of us, it could be obstacles on the track, it could be the walls, uh, the lane lines to help keep the car on track, moving as fast as possible. So when the car knows where it is, it feeds that data to the planner that then figures out where to go along the track for that optimal race line and sends that data to the controller so it knows how to steer and when to send the gas or brake based on that optimal race line and get this car around the track as fast as possible. Once we're actually out there for qualifying in the race, we send the car and that's it. It's fully autonomous out there. Um, we don't have any control other than red flags or other safety features, but once the car is out there, it's making its own decisions, whether to pass, not to pass, speed up, slow down, all completely on its own. What we have is pure AI. It understands the data and it makes the decision. I work with LIDARs, use the data, perceive the environment, the intensity, the field, the, the, the track, the bounds, and all the environment around it. So you perceive it, you, you see where you are, you see your, your, the, your opponent on the track, you want to go, you want to pass, you want to defend, you want to attack, and that's when perception comes in. Just like a human does, an AI considers many parts, and the beauty of the coding com comes in taking so many different parts of the, um, the code, you get them together, you analyze them together, you give weights to this, you give weights to that. That's exactly how uh, the AI functions, it's like a human driver. This is the state of the art when it comes to autonomy. So of course there's a research aspect to this. And so what our race engineers are doing is focused on the software. And so the software that can take the, all of the data from all of the sensors that are arrayed in this race car, fuse it all together in real time, making millisecond decisions and competing against other race cars also doing the same thing. Because this is the first time, the cars, the humans, the AI, or everybody's making a ton of mistakes. So naturally, there's a lot of crashes and accidents that happen. Whoa, not like that. And that is what happens under the lights. Cold attempt. Tentative lap. Oh, into the wall. The difficult part and what separates, and I really think the secret to winning here is how you respond to those crashes. So once you do have um, something that you didn't intend to happen, then you have to get the car back to our garage. We have to take all of the data, gigabytes of data. We load it into our cloud and the race engineers, that's when they really start to get to work is analyzing all of those data threads, all of the, uh, the, the graphs, the metrics, the, the raw sensor data, and using that to, to fine tweak the parameters, the mathematics that are in there and all the different nodes and components of the robot operating system that we're using. Uh, to, so that the next time Maverick goes out on the track, she's that much better. Trying to analyze what is around them, the constructor, keen to get an overtake. There we go, up through the gears and makes a clean pass.
cars with plenty of space. We look at grand challenges facing society and the economy and we turn them into competitions and we invite people from all over the world to come and compete here in order to push forward the capabilities of technology and importantly demonstrate it to the public in general of what's possible. For the Abu Dhabi Autonomous Racing League, for the car race we've set up, the grand challenge is all about road safety. The number of accidents occurring throughout the world on our roads and the number of fatalities stays stubbornly high. And we believe that there is opportunity for leveraging off the technology that has been developed in autonomous robotics and AI in order to develop the co-piloting capability that we can put into road cars that will prevent accidents occurring. This is a way of really pushing the limit of what can happen in extreme autonomous sports and with one key difference. You're making the developer today and the research and the scientist the hero. Of course, the, the base objective is pushing the limits of research when it comes to autonomous. You can address autonomy stacks in logistics industries. You can address uh, autonomy stacks in normal civilian like taxis and, uh, and so forth. You can address uh, autonomy stacks when it comes to farming, driverless cars, robots in your home. These are all a massive wave of things that are coming due to the acceleration of AI. Right now we're still following a classical approach to autonomy. There's some emerging areas of reinforcement learning, um, but those are, uh, are very difficult to apply into a real world setting. Uh, but maybe in the future we can introduce some of these more advanced deep learning techniques and uh, that, that'll be the path forward. As our AIs continue to evolve and continue to get better and better, and we're sure ultimately they will be faster than human drivers. I mean, there's just an unfair advantage when it comes to the technology that we're developing. But that doesn't mean to say that it's going to impact motorsports negatively. In fact, we think it's only going to increase the popularity of motorsports. There's a lot of interesting things when you compare the performance of AI against a human that can be applied, I think, more broadly to computer science in general. We know that we can apply the expertise that we have to any problem. So, yeah, maybe it is climate change, right? Maybe that's the problem that we think that we can solve. Um, and we can use robotics to do that in some way. Well, we've got a team to go and work on a solution to that big problem. Um, we're not sure exactly where we're focused yet. We just know that, that the Maverick AI is a very advanced modular system and that we can apply her nodes, her learning nodes and prediction nodes, perception, uh, to a whole, a whole deal of great challenges and hopefully continue to push forward the field of, of autonomy research and, uh, and our scientific endeavors around, around AI. But on the back straight, there we go, up 